If there's any one thing that will put chill bumps on me is the thought that I get to go and hunt Iowa. Not only do we have a great farm, it's the people there around us. We have Jeff and Terry Peel from Taxcam, Ben Thuru from Taxcam. I'm pulling both luck charms out, <laughs> so we're gonna have a trifecta. Chase Rawlsome from Rubline Marketing. We're gonna take care of everybody in camp. Cook for them, clean for them. I'm trying to kill deer myself. And uh, no matter what, we know we're gonna have a blast. What do you got to say about it? About what? <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> This week, we're still in Iowa. Eric's up to bat. I got a feeling you're gonna to wanna to stay tuned. I ain't ready for this. No. I know exactly what's gonna happen. In about five days, I'm gonna get a text or a phone call from both of them saying, we have just killed two absolute giants. I think we just got it done on the big eight, King. That is my first deer in the snow. This afternoon was an amazing hunt. We had a ton of deer. All right, last episode you saw Jason knock down a great buck. Eric's up to bat. I've got a feeling with the history that Eric has with this farm, he's not coming home empty handed. Come on, we're gonna make a move. I hate to do it. It may not work, but we're gonna make a move. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, man. Thanks. The dude, there is blood painted all. I see it from here. <laughs> and I he like, didn't leave 10 seconds. I was he? trying to get you to go back over there. God damn it. Two of the two. morning. He came up there all the way. That's a big deal, Chris. <laughs> Are you trying to get this shit with you? What a deer, son. The last chance I had to hunt Iowa um, was one of those years I'll never forget. Um, my, one of my favorite places to hunt, the big timber, standing beans, two acres, uh, 50 deer on the food that night, and a, a buck that I, we all called affectionately Boontown 10 walked into my life. I'll never forget it. Um, ended up being the biggest typical at that point I've ever killed in my life. I made one grunt in that deer. I mean, it was like fishing, man, like fishing for a big striper. I mean, here he came. Suck straight toward the blind. Coyote screaming. I mean, he was bigger than life standing there, and I knew, I knew I had to make this shot. is a freaking giant. Oh my gosh, what a deer. Jason, <laughs> oh my God. Are you freaking kidding me? Oh my God. <laughs> you know what? Like me and Jason, we don't know what it feels like to be a, a Tom Kiske, a Lilikovsky, a Mark Gurr. I mean, we just all, like I, John. where do you go from, from this? <laughs> Hey, it's like beating a dead horse to death, um, but if you're not running a lot of trail cameras, I mean, I'm sorry, but you're not playing as good a game as you can possibly play. When we get to Iowa every year, we already have cameras out, and we're gonna go and check them, and we wanna know exactly what's going on, what deer we've got. Hey, I've done a lot of cool things in life. I literally could run over this thousand acres in probably two or three hours and check every camera we got. I mean, I came from like way, way back in this timber. And I've honestly been just jacking around, messing around playing, but this thing's incredible. I mean, it really is, it blows my mind. I love being here right now, and the first mature deer I can find doing something consistent, that's the one I'm going after. One of the most effective ways this time of year, I love hunting where we're at here and I. We're in this far western region of the state, literally 
not very far from Nebraska line. So these deer are typically more like your plains bucks that you would find in Nebraska and Kansas. Not so much like what you find where the Kiskis hunt, uh, Lee and Tiffany, the Drury's, all on the eastern side of the state. And these bucks are really visible. So we never sleep in in the mornings. We always get up first thing at daylight and we literally go to where we can stand outside or either sit and just drive around in the morning depending on how cold it is and watch safely from a long distance our food plots to see what deer are doing. This year was no different because we had bucks still up because of the full moon banging around looking for one last hot doe. Go ahead, subscribe to our channel like it you're going to get that little notification bell it's going to go off let you know when something new hit follow subscribe happy hunting this fall we love everybody thank you again all right so we're riding around um, there's three bucks on one hot doe see this big deer and literally when i saw it i knew it was a giant we're driving down the road and we filmed this giant um, Eric says he's this big, I say he's this big. Like Eric's like, ah, oh, that deer's like 175. He ain't out of 70. He's like, well, you lost your mind. Jason and I got in a little bit of a, uh, an argument saying, you know, I thought the deer was probably 175 inch deer. Jason's laughing at me going, you don't know how to add. He's like, that deer is 190 inches if he's one inch. This deer is an absolute giant. I mean, he's got big G4s, he's got G5s, he's got two kickers at the bottom of his brow tines. This is a deer of a lifetime. Yep, that dog's hot, Jay. Because there's two more bucks over here to the right of him. He's got mud stuck on his feet and he don't know how to get it off. No, he don't either. He's hurt. Well, he's not. Yeah, he is. He's pretty gimpy. That's a giant here. Uh, yeah, there's three rag bucks right on that one day. Wow. I mean, that's what you come to the Midwest for. It's November the 29th. I mean, they forecast that these years when you have that late full moon in October, it's like they just trickle rut. There's three bucks on that one doe. I mean, there's no doubt she could cycle back in. So that's a big deal. That's a giant. That's, that's a giant. That's a giant. Anyways, the deer runs off and you know, we pretty much thought, well, it's a couple days probably before we'll see that deer again because typically when a mature buck will lock with a doe, they're with them for at least 48 hours. So you might as well either hope that you literally get on top of them or pray that you can catch them coming off of them. I think I'm gonna ride right here and see what happens. Every year we come out here, it always has impressed me ever since the first time I came to the Midwest, how many big rubs you see. And you always hear people talking about, post on social media, telephone poles where they rub them. And <laughs> right there is proof of it. They do it out here every year, but it's pretty cool to see that. But like this road sign here with the arrow, they have tore it all to pieces. But there's another power pole right back here. We seen another one the other day, Eric was uh, pointing it out. but. Um, this power pole's horn tore off pieces and this road sign, I mean, they've shredded. I'm surprised they didn't push it over, but I don't know why they gotta be so mad. We just all need to get along and like be happy. <laughs> Barbara Trim Chasing guys probably ain't gonna like that too. No, I've never seen a road sign like that horn. That's, um, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> We've got these blinds and a lot of people are gonna say immediately right out of the gate, like I cannot believe that you guys are putting these blinds up the day before season and during season. For whatever reason, I can tell you this, you can go throw a ground blind on the ground with a turkey and they're oblivious to it. You do that with a white tail, they're not oblivious to it. But if you take them and literally raise them 8, 10, 12, 14 feet in the air, it's like they just don't care. We got a big standing corn plot right here. We're gonna go in and uh, we got an old pop-up line on top of a platform out here and it's it's blew off. We had a, a blizzard the other week and it's it's pushed it plumb off the backside. So we all just voted and decided to get us some new ones and it's gonna be a lot funner hunting this year. I can promise you I'd rather sit in one of them than sitting on the ground or in a cold tree stand with it 15 below zero. So the new blinds are up and um, I cannot wait to sit on this standing corn. Now we just need the right deer to show up. No one Keegan. Make sure you subscribe and like the page. On top of that, make sure you click the little notification bell. That way you'll be one of the first ones to know when a new video drops. Got two areas that we look like they're pretty hot between what we're seeing, you know, uh, intel wise, and then also what we're seeing off our cameras. So it's game on. First night in, I'm hoping something good's gonna happen. 
from years past, um, the last time I was here, I had standing beans a couple years ago, killed Boontown 10. I just knew as many does as we had piling in here, there's no way we didn't have a mature deer um, using this part of the farm. The thing that scared me the most was, is we pulled five cameras off this end of the farm and literally had one mature deer. One, that was it, on probably 40 to 50 does hammering this food plot. Don't know what to say about it, but we're just not seeing the deer I need to see on this food. So I've killed my deer. We're trying to figure out where Eric needs to go. And Keegan and I have been seeing just tons of deer on the saddle. I told Eric, I said, I know it sounds crazy, but if I was you, I would go right back where I killed. There is too many mature deer in that hole. It's the third day of first shotgun here in Iowa. Me and Kyle just got in the blind. I gave up on my beans. I, I was hunting a, a deer we call Beamer. Um, he's a giant. Really thought I'd have a good chance of probably seeing that deer in five days, but you can't make them be there if they're not there. I don't know. I think he's on corn. I'm hunting here where Jason actually killed last night. We sat this morning and watched a couple of good bucks work this corn this morning. And it's just, this is one of those spots where it's just so good. It's right in the middle of everything. You would think going into a spot that Jason just killed on was probably like, oh, there's not gonna be any deer there. This food plot is in the center of the wheel. All the spokes run right down to it. We've literally got probably 100 to 150 deer piled into this hole. There's been zero pressure for the last month on these deer. Um, this is the spot to be. It's just a little after before three and I mean there's deer everywhere. It's just something about a whitetail, no matter what season it is, but in this snow, it's a little more special. I feel like a kid on there like. It literally was just like a parade of deer. I mean the deer start working the corn um, and I knew we were in for a good night. Super cold temperatures, standing corn, deer piling out. I look up and here comes a buck that I knew well from our trail camera pictures. Beautiful, typical 12, um, four year old. I'm not going to lie to you, I've always wanted to kill a typical 12. It took everything in me to not shoot him. At one point I was going to shoot him, at the next point I did not shoot him. End of the day I let him go and walk and that deer from 155 and his four year old will blow into probably 170, 180 class deer next year. Hard pill to swallow. What do you do? You know, you're sitting there, you got a five day season. Um, I haven't killed a deer, you know, in, in a couple years out here. So, I, I, you know, I'd like to take a deer home, but um, unfortunately it is what it is. Had a great night, saw a ton of deer. I think I'm gonna come back and ride it out right here. We need you to support us guys. So go over, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. And every time we post something, you're gonna get that little bell going off and you'll know instantly that you can go over and watch it and catch what's going on. Normally, in late season, I will not hunt mornings at all. Just simply because where you need to be is almost impossible to get to the deer. The deer obviously are on edge from a rut, um, the stress of winter coming on, so I normally don't like to do it. But the way that this one particular box blind was positioned, we could come in the back door, crawl up into the blind with deer in the food plot. It's one of those deals where it's a risk benefit and for me at this point with two days late the benefit is worth the risk i'm going to try it in the mornings no doubt the last three days of us riding around the deer were banging around for the you know the first two hours of light every single day i'm not missing out i'm going to hunt as the morning goes on there are literally deer like ants they're everywhere. It was the right decision, no doubt, with the moon phase. The deer were moving better in the mornings. It was about nine o'clock and I'll never forget it. I was sitting there looking, watching a couple mature deer feeding in a bean field about 600 yards away. And I looked down and immediately, when you see a true world-class deer, there is nothing like them. Actually right there is a deer. 
That's a boner. I mean, my gosh, what a deer. Good grief. He's gonna go right up here in this ditch and these cedars. How far is that? 200, 276. Shh. He's gonna go. He's gonna go right in this ditch right here. And I don't think he'll come out of it. He's cruising. Come on, we're gonna make a move. It may not work, but we're gonna make a move. Now I had two options, okay? I know this farm like the back of my hand. This deer was cruising. I mean, hey, it's it's first week of December, but I'm telling you, we literally had filmed that deer three days earlier with a hot doe. He was now freed up and he was looking for another hot doe. And I could either A, hope that he went into the thicket behind this stand and bedded and maybe work back up in the food plot that night, or for all I knew, he was going across the road and I never gonna see him again. The only thing I knew to do was to get out of the stand and make a stock on this deer. That big deer just went in below these cedars. My gut is he's gonna come right up this ditch right here. But there's some toes right here starting to work that way. We gotta be real careful. But I don't know. I don't, I mean, he's either gonna go up that ditch or come right up this ditch by here. We're just gonna. I'm like that is a giant. That's that's a deer I've been waiting my whole life for. Smokes everywhere. I'm standing there. I'm got the gun down. I'm watching because we can see both ends of this ditch, this cedar ditch. And I don't see nothing. Don't see him, which was a relief after about 30 seconds because I'm like either a, I hit him and he's down, or b, I hit him and he just went over here in the ditch and ran the ditch and I just can't see him. So we went back, got everybody together, and we we're gonna circle this deer, and little did we know it, it took it took Jason about 15 seconds to find that deer. <laughs> oh my god, we got him. As soon as I stepped in the snow, it's just blood everywhere. The new traditions bullets are amazing. I mean, for blood for a whitetail, this is unreal. The deer didn't make it 60 yards. Eric Hammerty. Hey, I love you, man. I love you too, man. Thanks. <laughs> Dude, there is blood painted all through the seat from here. <laughs> he didn't live 10 seconds. Did I was he? trying to get you to go back over there. You seen him over my shoulder. Like, you know? That's a giant. Yeah, it's just, it's not all that, man. It's like it's everything. You I know. know. Look at this. I mean, it's like God painted it this morning, you know? Well, go down there and get your hands on him because if you don't, I, don't I am. I ain't ready for this. No. He like. I the dirt too. Look at that. Dude. <laughs> I'm about to cry for you. There's very few times in my life I can remember that I've been speechless. Honestly, the birth of my daughter, um, the day I lost my dad, every time I say that, I get a little emotional. And, um, you know, this is just one of those days that I'm never going to forget the rest of my life. I mean, being with, I mean, everybody. I mean, we're all here together, Jeff, Tara, Jason, Keegan, Todd, Kyle. I don't know, man. I mean, there's just good days in life, and then today was an exceptional day, and if I die tomorrow, how can I not die with a smile on my face, you know? Man, mm -mm, what a day. No feelings can describe a deer of this caliber, and, and honestly, the setting that God had, had painted that morning. Um, to be there with some of the most awesome people I've ever met in my life. They're not just my buddies, they're my hunting buddies. And they're very important to me. And to be there on the biggest typical that I'll probably ever kill in my life, um, you know, is something I'm never gonna forget. This is a deer that I know Eric's dreamed of his entire life. I don't know if he's ever gonna beat it. I hope he does, but good job, brother. That is a once in a lifetime deer.
He dug in, he had a short window of opportunity, and he not only made a great shot, but they got to share it with some incredible friends. It's a hunting camp environment, and those are the things you just never forget. You know, we're all in this for experiences like this, for moments like this. Um, a highlight reel, of all highlight reels for me in my life. You know, I can't wait till I get the opportunity to come back one day and do it again.